So this is a little bit of a follow on from my final review of the Quest 2. Um, you know, when I was saying how, how crispy and how sharp and how good the experience is with Link, I only briefly touched on the fact that it draws quite a bit of additional load from your PC, from your graphics card and your CPU, although in kind of a strange way. So um, a lot of the questions I had in the, in the comments were, oh, I can't get ACC to run very well, I can't get Dirt Rally to run very well. You know, they're having to turn, people are having to turn the settings down in game to get a good experience. And then the other single most, re not requested question, single most asked question was about the resolution slider in the Oculus software on the PC when you're hooked up through Link. It's called rendering resolution. It's the same box that you choose your 72.8 your 90 hertz in. Um, in fact, let's get some, on the, yeah, let's do some screen capture and we'll put this in the video now as well. So, Here's the graphics preferences um, box that you go to just by clicking on your info. Let's just come out and show you completely. So my quest isn't plugged in, but you can imagine if it was, you click on it, you come down here, you click on graphics preferences. Now you can see I've got mine set on 90 hertz and rendering resolution 5,408 by 2,736. Now, lots of people are assuming that that setting that I've got it on there would be like super sampling, would be like rendering it higher than the native res of 3664 by 1920. And I actually forgot all about what I'm about to explain until some, I was talking to somebody in the comments on my final review video. Uh, and he triggered my memory and by, by pointing out that when VR renders graphics, it doesn't render them in the same way as if you're rendering a game on a flat screen, on a monitor or a television. So even though our native res is 3664 by 1920, because we're using lenses, there is something called barrel distortion. And so the, the game actually has to be rendered at about 50% higher res than what you actually want to display at. It renders it at this higher resolution to accommodate the barrel distortion, and then it unwarps the image and obviously fills your field of view accurately at the correct aspect ratio, accounting for the barrel distortion. And I'd forgotten all about this. So me and a lot of other people were looking at this rendering resolution you see here, and sort of, and everyone's going, why isn't there so you put it on one times, which is 3248 by 1648. Yeah, like, why, why isn't that the native resolution of the Quest? And this is, this is why. It's because the native resolution, to actually output an image at the native resolution of the Quest, it needs to be rendered at 5408 by 2736, 1.7 times on this slider. To accommodate that barrel distortion, it then unwarps it, presents it to the Quest LCD panel, and that gives us a one-to-one -one pixel to render ratio in the center of our view, because there is some foveated rendering that goes on with Link. Foveated rendering is when the, ed the area around the edges isn't rendered quite as high a resolution as the middle area where we're looking. Now, you can adjust this manually using Oculus Debug Tool, but the guy from Facebook, that pointed out this resolution here, 5408-2736, is what you need to use to get your one-to-one -one ratio in the middle. Also said that the foveated rendering option, so whether it renders like just the edges lower or a bit more in or a bit more in, obviously the, the, the further in you, you render lower, the better your performance, and the further you go out towards the edges at a one-to-one -one ratio, the greater hit on performance and more power you need to do it. He was saying this will be adjusted dynamically in the future as well. So it kind of sounds like if you use the Oculus Debug tool now, you can set that to low, medium or high yourself. Uh, and going forwards, it will actually adjust itself probably based on the frame rate you're hitting, I imagine. So this is how the slider works. And... <sighs> This is why it's confusing for people because it doesn't look like we're hitting the native resolution, but we are if we put it all the way up. So that isn't super sampling. That is where you need it to be to get the one-to-one -one resolution in the sort of center area where, where you're mostly looking. Now, if you do this and try it, you will see the difference. You can tell 
it is a one-to-one -one pixel ratio, you know, in the main area where you look. The thing about the Quest lenses is, the sweet spot isn't massive anyway. If you move your eyes around and look around the edges without moving your head, you can see it goes blurry around the edges anyway. That's because of the lenses and their focus their full focal point, their sweet spot. So having a slightly lower res in those blurry, blurry areas ain't gonna make any difference to our overall experience, but it will save us some performance, which is good. Um, now, obviously, if you have it at 90 hertz, and you have that at the one-to-one -one ratio, like we see here, 5408 by 2736, you're putting some serious load on the PC, because this is a, pardon me, this is a high resolution headset compared to the previous one, compared to the Quest 1, compared to the Rift S, compared to the CV1, the Vive, even the Valve Index. It's like 40% to almost 100% more pixels, depending which headset we're comparing it to. That is a lot, you know? And this just this resolution here that we're rendering at, 5408 by 2736, compare that to, you know, a 4K monitor, and there's more pixels here already. It's just, it's just really hard for our PCs to do, but that's what you need to have it at if you want to want if you want a one to one. For goodness' sake, get your words out, Carl. If you want a one to one render to pixel ratio for your display, that is what you need to have it at. Now, here's the problem. I've got an RTX 2080, 3800X. I've got 32 gig of RAM. It's completely irrelevant actually for this, but I've got a good CPU and a good GPU, right? Although technically, the 2080 is probably now regarded as a mid-tier GPU because the, the 3080s and the RX 6000 series blow it away. So I did have a good GPU. Now I have a mid-tier GPU. Uh, and actually the same goes for the CPU as well. The new 5000 series Ryzen ones blow that away. But anyway, two months ago, I had what was considered a reasonably high-spec PC. And I can if I run at 1.7 on this slider, the native res, in things like, okay, so simple games that have relatively low texture resolutions, they run just fine, there's no problem whatsoever. But if I load up Half-Life Alex or Stormland or Zero Calibre, something with, I mean, these are all first person shooters, something with decent resolution textures and good graphics, I have to turn the visuals in the game down anywhere to between ultra low and maybe medium if I'm lucky. Any higher than that, and my frame rate absolutely tanks. And obviously that's just a horrible experience, you can't do it. Now, drop in the refresh rate from 90 down to 80, and then in turn down to 72, gains you back some performance as well. So experiment with, because the, the thing for me is, I mean, whilst 90 hertz is great, I can also quite happily play at 80 or even 72, because when I use virtual desktop, I run at 72 hertz. For me, 90 hertz just isn't smooth enough. Um, and I don't mind 72 hertz in first person shooters. So I can gain sort of almost 20% frame rate performance back by dropping that down there. Um, and that will allow me to go a little bit higher on the in-game settings. But here's where this juggling act is gonna come in because you're gonna have to, for you personally, decide whether you want a high refresh rate or a lower refresh rate whether you want higher in-game settings or lower in-game settings, or whether you're happy to effectively undersample by moving this slider further down from the very maximum of 1.7. You're just gonna have to play around. And for me, I think I settled on somewhere like 1.3, so it's a little bit undersampled, but you're still getting the benefits of that high-res panel versus the earlier um, VR headsets, you know, there's still gonna be no screen door effect or anything like that, and it still looks pretty bloody sharp. Um, and sometimes also, like racing games, I play at 90, um, first person shooters, I might play at 72, and perhaps try and bump it up a little bit more if I can, but there's all this dicking about, all this messing around, and that's why I think when it default, if you turn automatic on for this resolution, it will change it based on the refresh rate. So the higher the refresh rate, look, the lower the resolution, the lower the refresh rate, the higher the resolution. It's doing this to save people who aren't so technically minded and who don't wanna to have to dick about with stuff. They wanna just plug it in and they want it to work. They're doing this to save them the ball ache and the experience of putting it on and going, why am I running at two frames a second? 
So they're putting it at a lower resolution by default so that most people can plug and play and have what they consider a good experience. Um, you know, the visual difference is massively noticeable and that's why I run it. About 1.3, uh, I think is what I sort of settled on as a good average, because I don't have to change this based on every game I play. That is Ball Lake as well. Now, talking about Sims, racing games, Dirt Rally 2, for example, I can, if I run it at 1.7 in here, I have to put everything on low in Dirt Rally 2 and that obviously looks shy. So don't really wanna do that. I prefer to go down to maybe 1.3 on here. I like it at 90 hertz because it just feels better at 90 hertz racing. Um, good for motion sickness as well, or preventing motion sickness. Uh, and then at 1.3 I can run on like sort of medium settings, which in fairness, is what I could, that's the best I could do with a Rift S and a CV1 anyway. Um, so what I'm gaining is a sharper picture with less screen door effect and better visuals than the Rift S um, on the same quality in game and at, the, and at 10 megahertz faster as well. So it's just, this, this is how it works. Um, this is the sort of hardware you're gonna need, 2080, 3800X to get the sort of experience I'm getting. If you've got anything less, then you're gonna to have to crank things back even further. We've just got to remember, this is really high resolution headset. It's almost as high as the G2. So, you know, you just gotta bear that in mind. We can't expect miracles. Now, if you've got a 3080, or maybe one of the new RX 6000 GPUs, you may well be able to crank this up with no problem. But, I'm getting a weird a weird situation where if I look at my GPU and CPU load in game, whether it's Dirt Rally, whether it's Stormland, whatever it is, I'm only hitting about 55% GPU usage and about 20% CPU usage. So I don't understand really why I've got such little of my available power being used or so it appears and yet um, my frame rate's tanking if I turn things up more. Now the CPU use is probably, well, well yeah, will relate to the, the number of cores being used and obviously it doesn't use all the cores so it's not using all the power available but the GPU, surely if I've got 45 to 50 percent more GPU overhead, why isn't that being used? I don't really know. Maybe again it's to do with the way VR is rendered. I, I, just, don't, I just don't know the answer to that. If someone does know, let me know in the comments because I'm curious as to why I've got 40% overhead left in my graphics card, according to the task manager performance charts this is. And yet in the game, and if I use Oculus Tray Tool, my overhead is obviously going into minus figures when the frame rate is, is dropping. So it is obviously maxing out the GPU in one way, but Task Manager shows me I've got plenty left, so I'm not quite sure. Maybe Task Manager doesn't measure GPU usage quite how we would like it to. I haven't really looked into it, to be honest, because I don't need to. The answer is, for me to run at the native res, I have to turn things down in the game, and that's with an RTX 2080 and a 3800X. So your mileage is gonna vary based on what CPU and GPU you have as well. Just be prepared. You may have to turn stuff down, and if you want to get the best experience, you might have to upgrade your hardware. But anyway, I thought I'd just do this as a little follow-up, because a lot of people were asking about it, and the confusion over the rendering resolution slider was quite apparent across the internet. So um, hopefully that explanation about how VR renders it about 50% higher to accommodate the barrel distortion in the lenses, and then it unwarps it to be the the field of view and the, and the aspect ratio that we actually see. And that's why that figure there of 5408 by 2736 is what you need to use for a one-to-one, -one, pixel to pixel, perfect uh, rendering in your, in your headset. But yeah, any questions, stick them in the comments. If anyone knows why Task Manager doesn't show my GPU usage higher, stick that in the comments too. Um, but as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.